Hello? 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 Yeah, am I Yes, we can hear you. We all right, you. all right, all right. Okay. So basically, an atom is such a small particle, the same way atomic habits are also small habits. Now, why is it that we need to learn about atomic habits or why is it that we need to learn about habits? I'm sure we know people, the way we talk about some people, like, you know, uh, we can safely go late for a cup of coffee because he's always late. Okay, habits. All right. I know if I give him something to be delivered, it will not be delivered on time habits. And therefore, uh, big psychologists and even philosophers were always in support of saying that you are not what you say you will do, but what you do. That means we are creatures of our habits. Okay. And our habits define us. We do not define our habits, but the way we follow up our habits, the way our habits are, that defines our personality. So um, now you'll have to unmute and answer. Okay, everyone. So one person can definitely unmute and answer here. So which, which photograph, which photograph can you relate to? The one on the left or one on the right? Think big or just take a step at a, at a time. Which one do you prefer? Anyone can answer. Or you can write it on the chat box as well. Okay. Well, uh, in my opinion, we should take one step at a time. Why should we take one step at a time? Is because when we think big, remember those New Year resolutions? All right, it's 31st of December. On the 1st of Jan onwards, I will go to gym every day for one hour. Doesn't happen. It never happens. Okay. Thank you, Kanishka. Yes, just take a step at a time. And that's how you can create habits. And therefore, it is called atomic habits. Goals versus process. Well, we should always follow the process. Why? Because goals are temporary. Once you achieve your goals, you will leave the process. And therefore, very beautifully, uh, Ricky Ma'am at the beginning of the session said that you must keep learning. The reason she reiterated that is because learning is a process. It is not a goal. And therefore, we must fall in love with the process in order to maintain the habits that we want to inculcate for life. So why is the process? Is because when you follow the process, it becomes your identity. While goals are just outcome based, okay? When you put a process in between and you follow that process through and through, it becomes your identity. You can identify with it. For an example, I want to read versus I want to become a reader. There is a difference. If I say I read, that means maybe I read once in a week. Maybe I read once in a while. Maybe I read sometimes once in a year. However, when I say I'm a reader, that means I read every day. I follow the process through and through. So the idea is not to just do it once in a while. The idea is to become something or identify with that, make it your identity and therefore follow the process. Okay. So the idea is definitely not to run one marathon, but to become a runner. We must not just learn to play an instrument, but we must become musicians. We must not just meditate, but we should be aware of our surroundings all the time. The presence of mind is what we say, and it is required in our industry the most. Okay, We, ha we require pres presence of mind. We need to make quick decisions, and therefore presence of mind is required. 
okay so never ever follow the goal goals are temporary always remember if you want to achieve something follow the process and in in quest of following the process it becomes your habits and therefore habits are very important so the basically the problem it's not us the problem is that we set our goals very high okay we want to achieve everything quickly i want to lose 10 kilos in a month and in that process we end up gaining 10 pounds and not losing it okay we also fall prey to our system so if we want something to make as our habit we shouldn't break it we can never break a habit we can always replace it with something if you think people are not able to quit some bad habits it's because they try to break it don't ever try to break a habit replace a habit with a better habit that way you will be able to leave your old habit behind for an example now if we see us okay we relate waking up with a phone how many of us check our phones as soon as we wake up just raise your hands or give me a thumbs up how many of us do that right correct yes so why does that happen do we make efforts do we take any efforts to do that not at all it it happens automatically why because it has become a system okay so if you keep your phone far away somewhere in the dining hall or say seating area i'm sure you will not pick up your phone and see it as soon as you wake up okay so in order to change habits you will you need not force yourself but you must change your system you must change the environment around you okay you want to study well and you see that in the room that you are looking at studying or you want to study there there are there is a television tempting there is a, an audio system tempting there is a phone tempting will you be able to study as much as you want to or as as good as you like to well you will not be so you will have to change your environment you will have to change your system according to your requirements according to the habits that you need to build that you want to build always remember don't go for major changes go for incremental changes go for small changes at a time that those small changes will always lead you to permanent habits will always lead you to system will be your identity can we boil water at at 99 degrees can we do that we cannot the water the water starts boiling at 100 degrees celsius if you switch off your gas or if you switch off your device at 99 degrees celsius and you say that the water didn't boil well the problem wasn't water the problem that the system was shut off or shut down at 99 degrees celsius okay so the same way habits are incremental and you will have to follow the process in order to get the habits right so the question is how is it that you are going to create those habits how is it that you are going to create your system okay so the habit loop is a four process loop it's a four quadrant loop okay i see it i like it i want it and i get it so how does it work let's take an example of it's about to be a 4 o'clock so let's take an example of coffee okay maybe you drink a lot of coffee and you want to stop drinking too much of coffee but the coffee is right in front of you 
okay you work at a coffee shop what happens then is the coffee available for you to see yes of course it's right there in front of you do you like it oh yes i love it so i have a visual clue cue then i have a craving of course because i love coffee and as soon as i feel the craving as soon as i realize that i want that cup of cup of coffee that like will turn into a want that i not only like that coffee but i also want that coffee and once you create that want for yourself you are going to get it okay so therefore the ones who think that i will stop drinking coffee from now on now on and then do not replace it with something else or something better those people will not be able to quit that habit so if you want to quit drinking coffee you will have to create a cue for yourself okay so firstly you might have to stop working at the coffee shop and find some other job if at all if at all it's not possible you will have to change your cues okay so you know that you get a craving say at around 4 in the evening for a cup of coffee so before that time you might want to create some some drink or uh, say some juice for yourself just prepare it and keep it in front of your eyes so now you are aware that you want to change your habit okay so awareness is definitely there the cue here is that instead of coffee there is juice a glass of juice in front of you or a cup of juice in front of you so though you get a craving for coffee you can tell yourself that i have something healthy in front of me i have a cup of juice or i have a glass of juice in front of me i better drink it because it's good for myself okay the response will be because it's good for myself i will pick up on that cue i will then want to drink a glass of juice and i have got a reward here see understand we as humans work on rewards okay we always say what's in it for me what will i get yes we always think that even when your parents say that uh, you know you have to get something from the shop you will think what will i get then your mommy will say all right i'm going to make some yummy dish for you okay then you are motivated then you have a craving then you have a response and the reward is food so the same way the reward is juice here a glass of juice and of course a uh, intangible reward is your health okay not immediately but in some time thank you kanishka so the same way you have you have to change your cues in order to change habits change your cues when you change the cues your craving will automatically subside trust me if the phone is in front of you and you're studying you will check the phone every 5 minutes why because the cue is right in front of you keep your phone somewhere away okay and if you are lazy enough you will not get up to check the phone okay so change your cues the craving will change the response will change and at the end of the day you will get rewards that you deserve you will get the habits that you want to incorporate for yourself so therefore the key is change your cues you want to study don't keep the phone inside your room you want to change your diet do not keep junk food outside keep fruits outside okay keep dry fruits on your kitchen counter and the chances are that you will not climb up the rack to pick up that packet of chips but you will pick up which is visible to you okay you want to start working out all right keep your gym clothes keep your uh, track pants outside the previous night and as soon as you wake up you should be able to see your track pants and it will remind you that okay i have to go for a run change your cues your craving will change the response will change and the rewards will be extraordinary any questions here
all right lovely so uh to what we spoke this is one example of that the di diderot effect okay your you change your environment you change your cues and then you will feel the need to change other things around you for an example you get a new sofa okay and then you will feel the need that i think i should change curtains oh i think the color of lamp is also not going very well with the sofa oh even the rug looks older and the sofa looks new let me change all these things that's called diderot effect okay so the same way you can use it on you when there is a change in the queue when there is a change in the environment other things around you will also change for good the same way prime your environment whenever you want to do something also create an environment that you would like to adapt to it that is suitable for you and that you can do well in perform well in all your friends are watching the television can you study you cannot study this is a very good principle that i want you to take along this is called grandma's law have you heard of delayed gratification this delayed gratification is a very good technique to hold yourself and to get great results out of yourself it's called prime pack principle it's also known as grandma's law very easy to remember as grandma's law okay so what you can do here is if you want say if you you have craving for pizza that i i want to have pizza anyhow okay but you also know that too much of a pizza is not good for yourself so what you will tell yourself here that i'll have a bowl of salad okay if i eat a bowl of salad i get to eat pizza delayed gratification what happens here is when you eat bowl of salad you've eaten something healthy okay at the same time your stomach is full with that fibers if you order pizza after that the chances are that you will have one or two slices of pizza versus the entire medium pizza okay so this is a prime pack principle which you can use same way if i study for 1 hour i get to watch television for 10 minutes prime pack principle grandma's law or delayed gratification whatever you want to say okay or i want to say i want to have a cheat meal once in a week only if i work out five days consecutive i get to eat a cheat meal okay so you can create a system like that wherein you are rewarding yourself understand never deprive yourself of rewards okay otherwise you will not be able to continue the habit but what you need to do is you need to trick your brain you need to tell your brain yes you are getting what you want however on my terms and conditions and finally go easy whenever you want to create a new habit make it easy for yourself you will follow with two you will follow a 2 minute rule okay for an example i want to start working out fine i will work out for 2 minutes to begin with when you create those habits i want to clean my room okay it should get cleaned up in 2 minutes i should fold clothes in 2 minutes then i will do something else in 2 minutes so when you do work in small intervals and at when something takes less than 2 minutes or 2 minutes you will love doing it you will be motivated to do it and when you see the results it will automatically become easy and start easy always always start easy do not work out one hour 
if you're starting to study after three months, do not sit for three hours the very first day. Start with half an hour. Because if you go hard on yourself, the chances are you will not be able to pick up that habit. So, and finally, remember that we have to fall in love with the process. Okay? And there is no other way but to get into the routine. I know people say routine is boring, but boring things are healthy, boring things are good, and boring things will get you your desired results. So therefore, don't say it's boring. Fall in love with the boredom. Okay, when you fall in love with the boredom, you will automatically start implementing those habits. You'll automatically start using and doing things that you want to and you will be able to identify yourself with that. What I want to take away, what I want you to take away from this session today is change your cues, your cravings will change, your response will change and you will get the rewards and get curious so that you do not get bored. Get curious to learn so that you can read books. Get curious to observe so that you will ne never get bored of looking at the nature, exploring new places. And that's how we learn new things and that's how we, get, we can shape new habits. After all, our habits are who, our habits are what we are and who we are. Always remember that. Thank you so much. Any questions? Please feel free to ask. You can also type your questions. That's totally fine. Anybody? Any habits that you want to shape, change, and you want to ask about it, feel free to. It's definitely not an easy process, but the tricks and the techniques that I've given you, with those tricks and techniques, you will do wonders for yourself. If you want, you can uh, take a snapshot as well. Any questions, students? I do have one question. Yes, okay, sure. I want to say one thing that I'm not a morning person at all since mm -hmm. my childhood. This is the <laughs> thing and I don't think that I'm suffering because of this thing because uh, it's not a, uh, it is not a loss for me from any perspective but yes, sometimes I feel that uh, it's, it is a habit of me that I want to change. So I just want to have some ideas from you i want to share this thing with you and want to have more things on it and how we can do this thing i am not a morning person at all okay all right <laughs> so first of all uh, ricky let me ask you this yeah. since you said it's not harmful why is it that you still want to change the habit yeah it's a very nice question to ask me that i really don't think that i'm a morning person when I'm sluggish all the time, I don't do my things. I always, I'm a very structured and composed when it comes to my things. I do wake up when there is some responsibilities. But yes, I'm not a morning person at all. And when I have to wake up in my routine, then I think, oh my God, it's too hectic. Tomorrow I have to wake up at 4. Tomorrow I have to wake up at 5. So I face problem in doing this. All right. Okay. So, uh, see, what we need to do here is, Ricky, firstly, if we want to, we need to make it as a habit. See, if you have to wake up at four or five in the morning, just once in a year or something, it's totally fine. You don't need to change your habits. But if it's a reoccurring scenario, in that case, you will have to shift your timetable somewhere. Okay, so by what time do you sleep, if I may ask? Uh, there is no fixed timing. I, I just want to be very true with you right now. <laughs> I 
I always try my level best to complete my all tasks before I fell asleep. Okay, all right. Yes. I always do this thing because I always complete my work till two or three a.m. Hmm. And uh, my father is an Indian Air Force and my fiance is in the Indian Army. Hmm. So they are very much structured and composed. Sleep at nine thirty and uh, they go. They wake up at <laughs> four and five. And I'm the one who is in my home. I always wake up late. I always sleep late. Okay. All right. So if you really want to change your habits, Ricky, don't change your habits drastically. Okay. So yeah. don't try to sleep at nine p.m. or ten p.m. It will definitely not work out. What you'll need to do is for one week, start sleeping by half an hour early and start waking up forty-five minutes early. Okay. Then in the next week, that half an hour will change into one hour. Okay. So that way you will be able to fit yourself somewhere at ten thirty eleven schedule. So even if you sleep by ten thirty to eleven, okay, it's a yeah, decent yeah. time, and then you should be able to wake by six thirty to seven. That's correct. Yes. So that's if that's your schedule, in that case, on a given day, if you have to wake up at say five o'clock, it won't be too tough for you. Okay. So yes, and it will only happen with time. Don't try to do it drastically. It will take four to six weeks for you to get on that schedule. So don't be too harsh on yourself. I stop taking rest in the afternoon as well, so that I can sleep on time in the night. But it is not helping me out. <laughs> no, it will not help you out unless you start waking up early. Yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. Yeah, yes, you have to maybe. compromise on your sleep sacrifice on your sleep for those couple of days okay yeah. and force yourself to wake a little early by half an hour by 45 minutes and then things shall start running smooth it won't be yeah. very easy but it will work out Thank okay you so much. well it's an honor to have you in this international webinar 2020 very well i'm welcome. really happy to have conversation Thank you so much. Uh, there is one more question. I want to start a new habit like doing yoga daily, but because of busy schedule, I have to skip. Okay. Uh, so Niharika, you don't need to skip. What you need to do is start your new habit. Use a two-minute rule. Okay. So don't start with yoga. Start with breathing exercise. For an example, as soon as you wake up in your bed itself. Okay. do some uh, uh breathing in breathing out exercise and uh you know just before brushing your teeth you can do some stretches and do it for 15 days do it for 21 days and then gradually increase your time start with 2 minutes for 3 days increase it to 5 minutes fourth day onwards then uh, seventh day onwards increase it to 10 minutes even if you even if you are super busy and you get you get 15 to 20 minutes of daily yoga you are good to go all right does that answer your question niharika any other questions any other questions hello ma'am Yes. I don't have any question, but can you please move the slide to the first slide so that just we can just take a snapshot of it. Absolutely. The Q ones. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. There you go. Thank you so much, ma'am. Very welcome. Yes. Anybody else with a question? i would love to answer all right nan then uh, ricky and captain over to you ah uh, yes um uh, miss uh, dipti i just want to have a more thing out of this uh, the session may i ask one thing to you absolutely When I was reading about you, I got a word that is uh, just a moment. I 
Um, it's P O S H. Yes. Uh, I really want you to please focus on this in this webinar. I really want to know about it. That how you do and what things. What are the tips for it? It's okay. just it's uh, just about one minute. I really don't want to take too much. Definitely, definitely. So, Ruki, uh, P O S H is Posh. So I'm a, uh, I'm a certified POSH trainer. POSH is prevention of sexual harassment. Okay, so it, it, this law is a must to follow for all the government and non-government organization and any uh, public or private or even limited liability partnership to follow if you have more than 10 employees whether you have this yes and this law works in for women wherein women understand how they can protect themselves in a working environment and for men to understand what are the repercussions of not following the laws at the same time we also help uh, um, companies to form uh, internal committee and that internal committee takes care of a lot of things within the organization so this law is for women. Definitely. Thank you so much. At the end of the session, I would like to welcome Ms. Poonam uh, for a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Ricky. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for the wonderful session. And yeah, uh, our I agree with the point, like our habits are what we are. And the tricks were really amazing. Uh, we will make sure to remind our own uh, roles and conditions which we have promised ourselves to follow them. And uh, if we want to achieve our goal for uh, those rules and regulations. And we will keep the things in our mind like we should not harsh in ourselves for the very first day of the, uh, you know, achieving that goal and uh, change our uh, and uh, we will change our cues and uh, cues and our uh, and convert it into our cravings. Uh, it will definitely will change. And uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing those views and giving such a beautiful example. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're very welcome. It was wonderful to be here, and it was wonderful to have such an interactive and uh, enthusiastic audiences. I would love to see you all again, definitely. Yeah, thank you, thank so you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Captain, for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Ricky.